Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel, and thanks for joining us. Docker has become very popular in the last few years, and in this video, we will explain what it provides and how developers can benefit from using it. Docker for Developers Most developers have heard that Docker is a container, but what does this really mean? Another question is why should I use Docker, and how can it improve my workflow? Does Docker really offer any benefits for software developers, or is it just something that is used during the deployment phase of a project? We will start with an overview of Docker and give a brief history of its evolution. Understanding what Docker is will help us define some of the reasons it is relevant during the development process. Then we will explain the fundamental terminology, including the difference between a Docker image and a Docker container. As part of our discussion, we will compare the pros and cons of using a virtual machine versus a Docker container, since both have their place in software engineering. In 2008, a product called .cloud was developed by a company of the same name. It was a platform running as a service, and although there were users, Linux developers and system administrators were more fascinated by the technology it took to run .cloud. It was sort of strange to have a company provide a service and have the user base ask for the underlying technology instead. Over the next several years, the .cloud company decided to realign their business, and in 2013 they released the Docker project and changed the company name to Docker. They moved from providing a service to offering technology which allows users to set up virtual servers on customer-owned hardware. The following year, the Docker company sold the original service platform to a company called Cloud Control so they could focus entirely on development of the Docker technology. Docker Enterprise is a product to manage large clusters of servers running Docker. At the end of 2019, the Docker company decided to sell this system to Mirantis. However, in doing so, they lost a significant revenue stream. This motivated the Docker company to completely reorganize in early 2020 and return to their original emphasis on helping developers create a better working environment. Rebranding and reorganizing for the Docker company seems to happen frequently and each time they have found a way to reinvent themselves. So what is Docker and why should you be using it? If you search the internet, you will find that Docker has been called a platform, a software program, a utility, and a framework. We also found articles about Docker, which said it was an operating system and a kernel. That is a lot of terms, but most of these miss the point. The most accurate definition is that Docker is a container. So what does the container hold? It stores all the files required to build and execute applications. It also manages access to the memory on the host computer, which is where programs physically stored in the container are run. The advantage of using a container is to isolate some aspect of the software development process from other applications running on the host computer. Each time a Docker container is created, it is like starting with a fresh install of your operating system and all of your development tools. This provides a repeatable build environment. The Docker company did not invent the usage of containers. However, they made the process of creating and using containers extremely accessible to everyday programmers. Let's talk about how you actually create a Docker container. The process involves three basic steps. The first step is to write a Docker file. This is a text document which contains a list of shell commands to configure the operating system and to add any packages or libraries your application will require. The second step is to run the Docker build command which reads the Docker file and then generates a Docker image. This build process executes each command in the Docker file. The generated image 
contains a read-only copy of every installed program. You can publish your Docker file or release the generated image to other developers. Each time the Docker file is used to build a new image, different versions of the installed files might be used. The advantage of distributing the image is that the exact version of each installed package will be preserved. Finally, we want to start the container, which happens by calling docker run. This command uses the generated docker image to create the new container. Docker containers share resources with the host system, so not every combination of host operating system and container operating system are possible. The container must have an operating system, but you cannot install a kernel. The hardware and kernel on the host machine are used to execute applications and services which run in the Docker container. The most supported combination is a Linux container on a Linux host system. Almost every Linux distribution is available as a Docker image, and they are conveniently hosted on hub.docker.com. You should always ensure the host Linux kernel is newer than the kernel used in the Linux Docker container. For example, running a Fedora 36 container on a Fedora 37 host will work just fine. However, you should not use Fedora 38 in a Docker container if you're running a Fedora 37 host computer. If you are running Windows on the host computer, you can either run Windows or Linux in the Docker container. There is currently no support for running OS X inside a Docker container. You can, however, run Linux containers on an OS X host computer. The public repository on the Docker Hub contains a massive number of images. Some of these images contain only an operating system, while others also include open source programs like Python, Apache, or WordPress. We decided to do a search for MariaDB and found multiple results. Narrowing this down to the official images, there is actually only one. We were curious what OS this image used. It turns out this was a bit tricky to figure out, and we had to look at the tags. They are using Ubuntu, and in most use cases, this will be fine. If you want to use a different OS, then you will need to build your own Docker image and install MariaDB manually. The Docker Hub we mentioned is like an app store for Docker images. Anyone can create a free account and upload images for public distribution. The Docker company also has a paid account where users can upload private images for distribution within their organization. You do not need an account to download public images. The Docker engine is the main software which is responsible for all the backend work necessary to create and run a container. It sets up the environment, connects the container to any virtual networks, and configures the virtual disk space the container will use. The software package Docker Desktop has a number of features, including a graphical interface to manage Docker images and containers. It is licensed under a subscription model, which has a free version and several different commercial tiers. This can be a good program to use if you prefer a visual interface over the command line interface in the Docker engine. Before you can start a container, the Docker program must be installed on the host computer. Most Linux distributions provide a Docker package. You can also download it directly from the Docker website. Using the Docker command will invoke the Docker engine which will pull images from the Docker Hub if it is not available on the host computer. 
If Docker needs to fetch the image, it is smart enough to cache the image locally. The first argument to the Docker command specifies the operation. In our example, we are calling run, which is the most common option. The rm argument indicates we want this container to be temporary, so all the disk space will be released when the container is stopped. The third argument specifies the container should be started in an interactive terminal. The user can then enter commands at the shell prompt of the container. The output will be displayed in this terminal. The last argument is the name of the Docker image we want to start. If you are looking to simply start a container running a Linux distribution from the Docker Hub, try using an image name like Debian or Fedora. Usually the Docker engine will fetch the newest stable release of that operating system. If you want to specify a version, then append a colon followed by the version number. For example, you could use Fedora colon 36 as the image name. Once the image is running, the container will start and the prompt will change to indicate you are now interacting with a shell running inside the container or guest operating system. Any services or daemons which were listed in the Docker file will automatically be started. Now you can install packages using the vendor provided package manager and run almost any command. What you will not see is a GUI since containers do not have access to the host display by default. There are ways to do this, however some of them can be complex. A virtual machine emulates a computer system using a combination of software and hardware to provide the functionality of a physical computer. So what is the actual difference between a virtual machine and a container? The simple answer is, they use different technology to accomplish pretty much the same thing. When a virtual machine is started, the VM software will allocate hardware from the host computer and reserve it for the exclusive use of the simulated computer. The operating system, which is running inside the VM, is booted like a real computer and is responsible for loading its own kernel. The virtual machine will also use memory pre-allocated from the host computer. It can run any Linux or Windows operating system, no matter what the host computer is running. In a Docker container, the operating system uses the kernel from the host computer. The container shares resources dynamically with the host computer. Memory is allocated to the container on demand and released back to the host whenever it is not needed. This provides a great deal of flexibility, especially when multiple containers are running on one host computer. The trade-off is that programs in the container are actually making calls directly to the host kernel. In order for the host computer and the container to coexist, the operating system used in the container must be binary compatible with the host. In our company, we use Docker to build on 12 different distributions of Linux, since each one requires a unique set of packages and settings. Every time we start a CI run, a new set of clean Docker containers are created. Testing can focus on the verification of the changes we made to our software, rather than debugging whether the correct packages were installed. One of the reasons we prefer Docker containers is their simplicity. If we do need to upgrade a Linux package, then all we need is to make a minor change to the Docker file. This only takes a few minutes as opposed to reinstalling a virtual machine from scratch. Moving from Linux VMs to Docker containers has improved the maintainability and performance of our CI process. It has also made it easier for team members to replicate our build environment, since all they need is a copy of our Docker files. For more information about CopperSpice, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment on this video 
or send us an email. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back for our next video.